Hey guys, uh, sorry about not having a post-fight video for this. I didn't actually catch this video live, or this fight live. Um, I was hanging out with my family, and um, it was my last day of vacation. And yeah, but I'm really glad to have gotten to see it. To see it, and this is so interesting because Errol Spence is showing now that he's growing as a fighter, that he's getting better. And what's really interesting about that is that. He, in this fight, he uses so many more techniques that he hasn't shown in his previous fights that would have made those fights just so much easier, you know? And <clears throat> it's interesting because he does everything in this fight that I suggested Peterson would need to do if he was going to win. Now, the crazy thing is, if neither of these fighters look to control either, like, either of each other, right, it winds up being a close fight. And I talk about this a lot in my fights, that the fighter that does use control the fighter that, you know, sets up his punches or controls the opponent, right? And that's what you're doing when you set your punches up. You're you're baiting your opponent into a poor position, right? But you're choosing that position with your feinting, your your lead hand dominance, right? You're probing. You're making your opponent move out of position so that you can easily land your offense, right? And it makes the fight look so much easier than it does, right? Just like I didn't predict that Billy Joe Saunders was going to be able to control David Lemieux. Um, I didn't predict that Errol Spence was going to be able to control Lamont Peterson. It's not a skill that he's really shown in any of his previous fights. But here again, we get to see how important it is that you control your opponent, that you use lead hand dominance, that you feint and you probe, and you stop your opponent from setting up their punches, you stop your opponent from working their way in, you stop your opponent from doing anything that they want to do, and you make them work around what you're doing. Um, and you can take away their whole game plan and wind up dominating them. So we're going to do uh, two rounds of film study on, uh, actually maybe only one. I'm not sure. We'll see how long it takes. But this is just, this, so like him beating Algieri, right? Algieri's a good fighter. He doesn't have the, the physical talent, right? Because he's from kickboxing, right? Um, he's just not as sh like sharp or fast or powerful, you know, because he hasn't been boxing his whole life, but Algeria's a good fighter, you know. Beating Algeria, not that much to get excited about, right? But a good win. It's important for him to be able to fight him and, and win. Kel Brook, um, beating Kel Brook in the way that he beat him, not like, it's important, right? Because he, he did take a lot of punches. He did, that was a close fight. Neither one of them controlled each other, right? That's exactly what I'm talking about in this film study. Neither one of them really controlled each other. Kelbrook was looking to counter over the jab, um, and Errol Spence was just looking to beast his way in. You know, he didn't look to control uh, Kelbrook at all with his lead hand or with his feinting or probing or anything, because um, I don't think he had those skills developed. I don't think he knew like how to use them. Um, but and now you see this fight, which I thought was going to be a very tough fight, just like the David Lemieux Billy Joe Saunders fight, um, and Errol Spence absolutely, absolutely fucking smashes him. Just smashes him. Like, sure, later in the rounds, when he's looking to knock him out, he kind of gets a little lackadaisical and kind of chills out a little bit on the skills part and takes some big shots. But all of the parts leading up to that, he just dominates Peterson. So let's go ahead and get into it and kind of talk about... Um, let me turn the sound off. <clears throat> and talk about what Errol Spence is doing that's so effective. So immediately... Now, the, one of the more interesting things about it, too... Remember, if you go back and you watch the Kell Brook fight, Errol Spence's head is in one position. He literally never moves it, right? He doesn't move his lead hand. Uh, only when he's punching does he ever move his lead hand. Uh, and he never moves his backhand either. <clears throat> um, it's always in one position. You know, he's got one guard. And that's basically my, my biggest criticism of Errol Spence and why I think he's, he's beatable, right? in spite of the fact that he's a phenomenal physical talent. But in this fight, he has a very active guard. He comes out right away. And look at how his hand is not at his at his temple, right? A lot of coaches, especially American coaches, they tell you, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. But when you have your hand at your temple, you can't control your opponent. It takes so much longer for you to get your hand to your opponent to control them, to feint, to probe, um, and it's so much more telegraphed. You can see it coming so much. So I love that his hand is not there right now, and he's active with it, right? Look at how active he is in his guard. Just 
ducking down a little bit, moving to the right, and then shooting his jab off of that move to the right, and then also when he does it, right, so he's going to dip to the right a little bit, right, close the distance a little bit, right, just with his head, and then shoot his jab, and he kind of ducks down to get under a possible counter, right, something that he may have learned after fighting Brook, right, and then immediately shoots that jab, and then controls his opponent, right? Notice how he's just sticking his lead hand out there, and he's not punching with it. That was another big criticism I had of Errol Spence, is that whenever he shoots his jab, he's always committed to it. He ne he doesn't know how to use his lead hand to probe or to feint, um, and to feint in a way that doesn't commit him to offense. And look at how easily he's able to keep Peterson out, out of range simply by using that lead hand, right? Just watch... Watch Peterson's reaction to this lead hand fluff, right? Peterson has to move back. He has to roll back, and now he has to reset. You know, it's so such simple stuff. But not understanding that you don't have to throw a huge hard punch it takes a long time. It takes a lot of confidence in your skills. It takes a high understanding of boxing. And it's very refreshing to see that Errol Spence is getting it. Again, look at his guard, right? His head is moving. You know, it's, it's still kind of there, but he's... He's fainting a lot more. He's moving. He's he's moving at the waist to change angles. He does kind of get caught right there, but it's not a big deal. And then immediately goes back to using his little probing jab, right, to control Peterson. And look at how, again, look at how Peterson reacts to it. Peterson has to move back and reset. And that's how Errol Spence controls him throughout the whole fight is just using a little probing jab. Uh, and it keeps Peterson out on the outside. And then he's able to shoot his jab. Oh my god, and this is a beautiful technique, you guys. This is amazing. So we're he Aero Spence does two things in this in this regard. He shoots a probing jab, right? <coughs> and again, my biggest criticism of Aero Spence not having an active guard, right? And using lead hand dominance and using a probing jab as part of having an active guard, constantly moving and making your opponent think. But that he does he always commits to his jab. And in this regard, uh, he doesn't commit to his jab. He doesn't step forward and shoot in with his jab, right? And look at what Peterson does to get away from the jab. If 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 Errol Spence would have committed to the jab like he normally does, uh, Peterson would have been able to slip to the outside and catch him with the body shot and beat him to lead foot dominance. But he shoots that jab. Peterson commits to a motion to move to the outside. And because Errol Spence is basically just standing there, right? He's not committed to the motion of his jab. He's in perfect position to control Peterson's head, hold him out there, and then set up a huge left hand. You guys, that is beautiful boxing, you guys. That is absolutely amazing. And that's exactly what you want to be doing with your control, with your fainting and your probing. Make your opponent make a mistake and then make them pay for it. And it's so refreshing to see Errol Spence making adjustments and and using these kinds of techniques. He did a something similar to this. Um, he did something similar to this in the Algeria fight, and I, I pointed it out, but it was very committed, right? He shot the jab real hard, and then he, he knew that uh, Chris Algeri was going to shoot to the outside, so he shot the jab real hard, sold it real hard, and then shot to his left, and then caught Algeri with the left hand. Um, and in this case... Uh, he does that so much better because he's able to he's able to read Peterson's movements without having to predict them, right? It doesn't matter what Peterson does if he commits to the shot because Errol Spence is going to have a counter for it because he's not committed to what he's doing. So beautiful boxing from Errol Spence right here. And then immediately after shooting that shot, boom, takes a step back and then controls Peterson with the lead hand. Right? And then Peterson, although he worked his way in and got caught with that shot, again, he has to move back, and he's out of position. I think we will just watch this in slow-mo, too, because it's a little easier. Again, not committing to his jab, just kind of probing. And then he does commit to a shot right there and gets kind of caught right there, but it's not a big deal. You know, it, it is important that he's mixing the feints and the probes because that's what got him caught so many times by Kell Brook is that Kell Brook was always able to time the jab. He was always able to when he wanted to because Errol Spence didn't use actual feints. He didn't actually probe to gauge his opponent's reactions. <coughs> And it's really refreshing to see Errol Spence using those probes. Again, using that probe right there. Jabbing. Not committing to the jab either. Right? In that instance, right? 
So he shoots the jab, boom, and he takes a step back, shoots the jab, ducks his head away from a counter, and is able to move back, all while controlling Peterson. As Peterson's trying to use his, his active guard, Peterson's trying to weave his way in, and Errol Spence is able to just simply shoot the jab out and control Peterson. Peterson's doing the right thing. He's using his head movement. He's using his bobbing and weaving. Um, but Errol Spence, because he's not shooting hard jabs at Peterson, he's just probing. He's able to make Peterson reset. So Peterson has to look for a different avenue of, of working his way in. Again, more probing from him. And then when the jab does come, or when the attack does come off the probe, right? When it does come, he's able to just control him and take a step back. You know, not staying on the line with Peterson, which I said was a huge problem for for um, Spence is staying on the line with him and allowing him to work on the way in. Uh, and and Errol Spence does a great job of avoiding being on the line with Peterson. Again, not committing to the jab, right? Normally he shoots the jab and... Uh, he takes lead foot dominance, but this in this instance, he's able to just get him in his high guard, shoot the jab, and not be super committed, not transferring all his weight. He doesn't move his back leg like he normally does, where he's off the ground and he has to make a, mo a motion. <coughs> right there, he kind of slides forward, but you know because it's it's he's varying it. Oh my God, and beautiful. So now the other criticism that I have for Errol Spence uh, in his previous fights is that. All of his left hands are set up from flashing the lead hand twice. He goes flash, flash, takes lead foot dominance, and then throws the left hand. You know, against lesser fighters um, or fighters who have never seen tape of you, which is, you know, most fighters, especially when you're a young fighter, um, it's a great technique. You know, you learn to set it up, and that's what you're, you stick with. But at the higher levels, you got to do something because your opponents are going to be able to pick it up. I tell a little story about Mayweather shooting the right hand and then taking a shot to the right and then setting up punches. Um, and that was like a huge uh, style of offense for him. <coughs> Excuse me. But he abandoned it after the Oscar De La Hoya fight. When he tried that tactic against Oscar De La Hoya, and Oscar De La Hoya had watched plenty of tape, him and Freddie Roach, and he immediately had his high guard up and then just pivoted straight to the left, beat Mayweather to the line, and then caught him with the combination. And that had to, that stopped Mayweather from ever using that technique again because now people had seen a way to counter it, right? And that was one of the biggest worries that I had for Errol Spence is that people are going to find a way to beat Errol Spence to the line. You know, very similar to um, if they were to use um, Guillermo Rigando's tactic, right? Or the one that Mayweather used against Pacquiao when they try to do that. Because Pacquiao used a very similar technique against Mayweather, but Mayweather would just shoot the straight right hand and catch him while he's transitioning to lead foot dominance and catch him with the right hand. Um, I think Mayweather learned that from Rigando uh, against Nonito Donaire. <clears throat> and that was very effective against both fighters. And I thought something eventually very similar was going to happen to Errol Spence. But in this regard, we have Errol Spence shooting a jab, right? But he shoots it at Peterson's glove, gets his glove up, takes a step back, then faints, right? But look at how he doesn't commit to it, right? It's just a probe just to control Peterson's lead hand, get him into high guard, and then shoot a body shot, and then take a step back, you know? <clears throat> He could take another angle or move off the line, you know, um, or do something defensively responsible. But the fact that he does this without committing to the shot, without, and, and he's able to gauge Peterson's reaction by getting him into high guard. Oh, high guard. Then he shoots another jab, gets him into high guard again, and then shoots the body shot and then resets, you know, showing that there's real growth in, in Errol Spence's camp and people are really helping him uh, to grow and to learn boxing. You know, whoever he's training with, I think it's Jerm uh, Lil J, <laughs> uh, Jermel, Jermel Charlo. I think that's the one that he's training with, <clears throat> um, who beat uh, Lubin. And then again, shooting the jab and not having to commit to it. You know, beautiful boxing from Mr. S Mr. Spence here. And again, controlling Peterson when Peterson's looking to set his shots up. Peterson coming forward and just walking into the jab, and it's not a real jab. As you can see, like the difference between this jab right here, where he just shoots his jab out, and then he steps with this jab and shoots a harder jab. You can tell that he's really thinking about how he uses his lead hand and how that puts him into poor positions. <clears throat> now here, he does wind up committing to a jab, right? And Peterson's able to get away from it. 
but he's able to control Peterson right here with his forearm and then take a step back and kind of move off the line and it kind of nullifies all of Peterson's work right there and his ability to get inside. <coughs> Again, not not just flashing the lead hand, not even though he takes lead foot dominance and he gets uh, Peterson to get in his high guard, still testing the waters, still getting a look at Peterson rather than just committing to his offense as usual. And then again, beautiful. He doesn't commit to his shots right here, right? So he sees that he goes to the high guard there off that jab. Now he puts him probing shot, right? He's not stepping with the jab right here. He's not shooting it real hard. And he shoots the jab, gets him to show the high guard, then takes a step, assuming that he's going to go to the high guard again, and then goes to the body with the left hand, right? <clears throat> um, it was the right here. Right here is the time that he should be shooting the left hand, right? He's obviously still learning and, and perfecting this technique, but he understands that he needs to know how his opponent is going to react to something. He needs to condition him before committing to the shots and walking into counters. Uh, and he does a great job of setting up the shot. Even though that's the same technique that I give him so much shit for in his previous fights, he's setting it up so much better than he does in, his, in the previous fights where he doesn't know how his opponents are going to react to it. <clears throat> Again, controlling him with the jab. And these are not real jabs, right? Just probing. Hey, what's up, Peter? What's up, man? What's going on, Lamont? What are you doing over there? Oh, oh, you're trying to sh you're trying to punch me in the face. Don't do that. Oh, and then look at how Peterson is trying to weave his way in, right? He's stepping forward, leaning in. As soon as he leans in, Errol Spence shoots the jab, right? Errol Spence lean uh, Lamont Peterson starts leaning in on his left leg. Errol Spence controls him again. Now he leans. He starts to lean forward again, and Peterson, uh, <coughs> Errol Spence knows a jab is coming, right? And then he's able to control him after the first shot, right? He knows that the first jab is just to set up his next shot, right? So he doesn't worry about the jab because he understands his range right now, and he immediately uses his lead hand to control Peterson's right arm, right? Look at how he gets it onto Peterson's right glove and takes a step back at the same time. Beautiful boxing, you guys. Just watch that again. Right? He knows that the first one's just a setup, so he takes a step back and then controls the right hand of Peterson. Beautiful boxing, you guys. Where is Errol Spence getting these this training, right? Who is teaching him boxing right now? Because this is some next level shit that you've just never seen in, in an Errol Spence fight before. I haven't. And I watched I watched that fucking Leonard Bundu fight so many goddamn times. I'm so sick of that fight. I didn't I don't think I did any actual film study on it. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But I know that I looked at it a lot, uh, just in case, um, to kind of figure out other things. I watched the Chris Algieri fight so many times. I've recently watched the Errol Spence fight with uh, Kel Brook many times, and just nothing like this. And then immediately goes back to controlling him with the lead hand, and then beautiful, right? Beautiful. Shoots the jab, goes to the high guard shoots the jab, and Peterson starts ducking under it to work his way in. And what does Earl Spence do? He doesn't just bring his glove back like most coaches tell you. Bring it back! Bring it back! That'll stop the counters! No. He controls Lamont's head and his shoulder and stops Lamont from taking an advantageous position on him. Right? Something that he didn't do against Kell Brook, and that allowed Kell Brook to counter over the top of the jab. Right? Beautiful boxing. And then catches him with the jab after. Oh, man. Beautiful. Controls him. And then, boom! Catch him with another shot. Beautiful boxing, you guys. Uh, Errol Spence. This is the kind of stuff... Now, this is the kind of stuff, like I said earlier, this is the kind of stuff you want to get excited about, right? Just seeing, like, a new prospect coming up, up and coming, you know, beating up people and knocking them out. And they have great technique. And <clears throat> they hit hard. And they're fast. And... They're sharp, you know, that's that's not exciting, you know. You know, you could go watch a guy, um, Kevin Cagle, right? That guy was like 15-0 and 0 with 15 knockouts, super fast, super sharp. Um, he had an amateur career, you know, he had good technique, but he fought Yuri Foreman, and Yuri Foreman absolutely freaking dominated. I think Yuri Foreman even knocked him out, you know, but the guy had, he was sharp, he was fast, he hit hard, and he had good technique, but he had no boxing skills, right? So he's not something to get... You don't want Errol Spence to wind up being Kevin Cagle. I know you guys probably don't know who the fuck that is, right? And that's not important, right? That's actually a fight that um, <coughs> my coach showed me when I was training. 
he showed me that fight. He's all, look at this guy, 15 and 0, 15 knockouts, blah blah blah. You know, but watch this little skinny um, Jewish kid, right? I think I think I only know he's Jewish. Is he Jewish? I'm not sure. Or is he Islamic? I'm not sure, but I think Ellie Sekback was pretty excited about that guy, and that's why I think I have any connotation about that. But anyway, my coach showed me that, and he's all, this is how you box, this is how you do it. You know, and Yuri Foreman had, like, that in-and-out style, this, this, and that, you know. But um, he dominated Kevin Cagle, and that's what I would be worried about with Errol Spence. That's why I don't get excited about fighters with great technique and speed and power and this and that. You want to get excited over boxing skills, things that mitigate their risk. And Kevin Cagle didn't have any of those skills, and he got smashed by Yuri Foreman. Anyway, <clears throat> beautiful again, right? Shooting the lead hand twice. Peterson's taking a step back, and he's able to probe with the with the right hand or the left hand. He doesn't even have to shoot it, and he's get he's able to get uh, a read on Peterson. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, man. And again, Peterson trying to work his way inside. <clears throat> so, Peterson setting down, trying to work his way inside. You see him duck down, and immediately Spence shoots a jab in his face, shoots another jab in his face, and makes him reset. Peterson working his way in again, working his way in again, and as soon as he starts working his way in again, what does Errol Spence say? He says, no, bro, stop that. And he controls him with the lead hand, right? And then controls him with the lead hand. Notice, this is not even a real jab. The second one... <clears throat> so he controls him with the first one, and now he just pushes his head up, right, to control his head and to pull him up to control him again to stop him from setting up his punches because he understands, oh, Peterson's looking to make action work happen right now. I might not be in the best position to uh, defend it if he's setting shots up that I might not be able to see at odd angles or whatever. So he controls him with the lead hand and is able to make him reset and stops Peterson from setting his punches up. Again, very important. Again, beautiful, right? So look at that whole sequence again. Shoves his head up. Peterson starts coming in. Gets his high guard up. Starts leaning in. Gets his high guard up. Starts leaning in again, right? And Errol Spence shoots a jab at him. Starts leaning in again. And this is how Peterson is looking to work his way in. Shoots a jab. Shoots a jab. And then shoots another jab. Gets him into the high guard. And then goes to the body, right? But notice how he's not committing himself to any of these probing shots, right? Probe, probe, probe. And he doesn't shoot his way all the way in without knowing how Peterson's going to react. And he's very patient with these probes to get him into the high guard. You know, if you go back and you watch any of his other fights, <clears throat> he's super explosive, he's super fast and powerful, but he's just not patient in this regard. And he's not even able to take away or take advantage of how powerful he really is. And again, Peterson looking to, to lean in, to work his way in, and as soon as he starts doing it, Errol Spence controls him with the lead hand, controls him, controls him, not committing to any of those shots, and able to get Peterson into the high guard, and just whip a left hand around the guard. You know, it doesn't matter that it doesn't land, you know, that's not important. <coughs> <coughs> Shooting the jab, he looks to, con so Peterson shoots the jab right here, and look at, it looks like he's shooting his jab at um, at Peterson's chin, but if you see his glove, oh man, it's really tough to see, but he's actually shooting his glove at Peterson's right glove to stop the right hand from coming. You know, something that Vasily Lomachenko does. I think that's his glove right there. You know, might just be bad camera quality, right? I apologize for that. But again, looking to control his opponent and control, yeah, he punches his right glove to stop him from shooting the right hand because he knows the first punch is just a setup shot ducks away from the from the right hand and moves off the line. Beautiful boxing from Errol Spence here. I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. <coughs> now here, Errol Spence comes in with the jab, or he's he's timing him, and uh, he shoots the jab for real off of the timing because Peterson's a good fighter, right? Peterson understands that every time he leans on that front left leg to kind of come forward and try to make something happen, Errol Spence is timing him, shooting the jab, using a probe, and he finally finds a spot where um, Errol Spence shoots a real jab, and he comes in with the right hand, uh, Spence controls it, right, and uses that jab to control him, right? Notice how he doesn't bring his hand back, but he uses it to control Peterson and pull back, right? So the jab comes out, boom, he catches the right hand, 
right? But he doesn't bring his his left or his right hand back. He uses it to control Peterson and turn out and move off of angles, right? And that takes away Peterson's ability to get uh, Errol into like the high guard, right? While he's on the line with him and throw punches on the inside because he controls him, pushes him off, and moves off the line. And then right back to controlling his lead hand again, right? And not committing to these shots, not committing to these punches, but just probing with them, right? Even that jab that lands, right? That's not a real punch, right? J probe, probe. And he's just pushing Errol, uh, pushing Peterson back and controlling him. Beautiful boxing. Great game plan from him. <clears throat> now, this is a little worrisome, right? The, the jab comes out. And Errol Spence uses defensive responsibility, right? But notice how he kind of just ducks back, right? <clears throat> kind of reminiscent to the Erickson Lubin kind of situation where Lubin kind of rolled into the shot, you know? But if you look at the problem that I have with it in this instance is that um, when he does it, he doesn't transfer his weight, right? His hips. So his right hip is not coming into his left hip, right? So from this position, he's going to have a hard time shooting out or shooting like shooting back or even just coming back with a punch because his weight is kind of so uh, evenly distributed, right? It does help that Peterson kind of doesn't follow up, right? But that's not really the point. Now, again, a good job from Errol Spence probing, shooting the jab but not committing to it, right? And able to just take a step back and get a look at Peterson and how he's looking to defend himself. Again, he doesn't go wild with the probing, right, or with the with the lead hand. Shoots the probing shot, right, at the guard of Peterson, right. He's not just flashing it up there and then allowing Peterson to maintain control of his hands, but he actually makes sure to hit Peterson's lead hand to control it. That's going to stop a counter. That's going to stop, like, the, the left hook counters that Brooke was throwing, even though I think that Brooke's guard was a little wider, right, uh, so that might not have been the case. <coughs> um... But the fact that he's hitting the lead hand and not just flashing the lead hand up to take uh, lead foot dominance and then controlling it again and realizing that Peterson is moving away. So there's no point in throwing the left hand because he's not in range anymore. But beautiful boxing from Errol Spence here. Again, Peterson tries to make something happen, right? Steps forward. Gives him a feint, thinks that the jab is coming on that timing because that's every time that Errol Spence, or, uh, Peterson has kind of gotten into that lead left leg. Peters, uh, Errol Spence has shot that jab and then controls him after it. And Peterson has to reset. He doesn't know where the offense is coming, right? Peterson being a smart fighter too, right? Understanding that, oh, he's not in position to defend a punch that he can't see coming. Also, worried about whether or not Errol Spence took lead foot dominance, right? He has to worry about that because that jab is coming up to his glove. He doesn't have any vision on the left side of his body. <clears throat> Boom. And knowing that he's going to go into his high guard off the lead hand, right? Off the jab, right? And this time, he doesn't shoot two jabs. He just shoots one and takes lead foot dominance, right? And then controls him on the way out, pushes him up, and stops him from being able to work on the inside. Again, great job, right? Shooting the jab, probing, controlling him. Peterson shoots a jab, and it looks like Errol Spence shoots that jab right at Peterson's right glove again, and then turns out, <coughs> you know, uh, while Peterson moves off the line. You know, brilliant boxing from Errol Spence here. Again, more probing, right? Not committing to the shot, right? Just stick the jab out, stick the jab out. Peterson goes to the high guard and he goes to the body. And then off of that, so boom. Sorry if it's a little slow. Boom, boom, body shot. And he's still got his left hand out there and he pushes Peterson back. He doesn't allow Peterson to get into the, into the inside and start punching. Controlling him, taking a step back, controlling him. And look at how well he's doing this, you guys. Just with the lead hand, boom, boom, boom. What you doing, Peterson? What's up, man? What's going on? What's up? Show me what you got, bro. Show me what you got. You got nothing. And then immediately goes to the to the left hand, to the body again. <clears throat> boom, boom. And then while he's doing that, controlling Peterson's head, right? Now, I know you're not supposed to have both of your hands out at the same time, right? You're not supposed to punch at the same time, right? But that's not what Errol Spence is doing, right? He's controlling him, right? He has his hand on him, and then boom, throws a body shot, and then pushes off after he transfers his weight, right? It's very similar to the when your opponent, your coach says, throw a one, two, one, right? So he probes, controls him, holds his head there, punches to the body, and then pushes off, 
This is just a higher level technique. And this is the kind of stuff that really makes you excited to watch Errol Spence. Makes me excited to watch Errol Spence is his ability to dominate a fighter. You know, he's beaten everybody, right? <coughs> but he's gotten hit against everybody as well. You know, I know that even the Errol Spence fans were in a lot of suspense against Kell Brook. Right? They were like, oh, man, it's the close fight. Oh, Kell Brook is landing some big shots. Oh, Kell Brook kind of hurt him. Kell Brook caught him with a big shot. You know, you know, Chris Algieri landed a couple shots, although Chris Algieri ain't got no power, right? But he's never dominated a fighter of Peterson's level um, in this regard. You know, Peterson hasn't done anything this round, and this could have been a very close fight for him. Good job from Arrow here. Peterson looking to get that jab off, and... Uh, Arrow kind of ducks away, and this time he does kind of transfer his weight and move off the line and then control Peterson, you know, understanding that that left hand or that right hand from Peterson might be coming. <clears throat> but this is the kind of stuff you want to get excited over, you know. <coughs> uh, Arrow Spence as a prospect, super fun to watch, um, you know, very exciting fighter, but Arrow Spence transforming into the champion right? The world-class contender. That's what he's doing in this fight, in my opinion. This is, you know, the Kell Brook fight was a great victory for him and a great learning experience. But for me, this is his breakout fight. This is his breakout performance. This, and I know a lot of people are kind of low on Peterson, you know, but Peterson is a warrior. Peterson is a tough fighter, you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my goodness. But anyway, moving on, we'll get to the rest of the fight. Controlling him, shoots that jab again, the same jab that Kell Brook was countering. Errol, uh, Peterson takes lead foot dominance on him. He's got the better position, but because Errol Spence is not committed to the shot, and even if he was, he understands that he doesn't need to bring his hand back to his face, right? Because if he brings his hand straight back, Peterson has the lead foot dominance against him. He's going to land some shots, so he controls him and moves off the line and takes a step back. And now he could have, you know, shot a left hand over the top, but the distance was probably not permitting to him. And then immediately goes back to controlling him with the lead hand. Again, controlling him with the lead hand, using defensive responsibility here, <clears throat> controls the lead hand. Peterson tries to shoot a jab over the top of it. And what does Errol Spence do? He ducks using defensive responsibility and moves off the line. He, he's able to pivot this time and move off the line and continue controlling Peterson and keep him on the outside. <clears throat> now, this is very similar to what Billy Joe Saunders did to um, David Lemieux, except that uh, Billy Joe Saunders wasn't as active with his lead hand, right? <coughs> he was able to... He was able to control David Lemieux and stop David Lemieux from setting up his punches, but he would do that by probing with his lead hand, bop, 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 and then he would throw a punch and then, I don't want to say run, right, but he would move away and get away from um, get away from David Lemieux rather than continue controlling him and keeping him on the outside with the lead hand, right? So I would say this is definitely a step above the Billy Joe Saunders performance because he's able to stay there and stay in range, in punching range of of Peterson, and that's why he was able to knock him out, right? Because we did see uh, Billy Joe Saunders land some really clean blows against um, against uh, David Lemieux, but he wasn't able to actually knock him out because the there was wasn't enough um, enough volume. And again, beautiful probing, right? He's not committing to the shot. Probing gets him into his high guard and then just shoots a body shot and takes the easy pickings, right? He's got Peterson. Again, this is what I talk about. He's got him out of position, right? Peterson's in position to counter right now. Now he shoots the jab at his lead hand, right? Gets him into high guard, gets him into high guard. And now Peterson's not in position to counter anything. He can't even see what's going on. And the body shot comes and just gets a free shot, you know? And he sets it up very easily without putting himself at risk, without committing to any shots. Just some beautiful boxing from Errol Spence. Showing some real growth, right? And beautiful, right? <clears throat> He takes lead foot dominance on him, shoots the jab, takes lead foot dominance off another probe. But Peterson's taking a step back, and he's still gauging what he's doing. He doesn't just commit to a reckless, wild left hand that Peterson may be looking for or Peterson may be ready for because of the fact that Errol Spence has that very predictable offense in all of his previous fights. Um, he knows that P Peterson might be looking for that. And again, shoots the jab when he starts um, he starts coming in, right? And what does Errol Spence do immediately? Controls his head, controls his shoulder, 
and then takes a step back, and Peterson is not able to do anything. Look at how he shut Peterson out of this foul, right? He completely shut him out of this round, right? <clears throat> Peterson hasn't been able to throw a single power punch, right? Or land a single punch, you know? Even his jabs, I don't think, have landed at all. Again, controlling him with the lead hand, not committing to it, and able to control him, right? Even the counter right there, right? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> able to get away from it. He kind of leans back, you know? I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of that. I think he should be transferring his weight and pivoting out to his left, right? Uh, you don't want to move back. But because he's able to control Peterson so well with his lead hand, he's able to get away with it because Peterson's probably thinking, oh, he's going to use that jab again. Oh, here comes that jab again after every time he does anything. <clears throat> oh, man. Again, beautiful, right? Probing shot, right? Probing shot. Peterson ducks under, trying to get on the inside. Arrow Spence controls his head and then catches him with an uppercut. Beautiful. And then what does he do after? He pushes him off. He says, nah, bro, stop that, right? Rather than taking a step back, he just pushes him off and stops him from closing the distance. Again, the same thing. You know, you guys might be getting tired of it. 35 minutes of saying, oh, controlling him with the jab. Taking a step back, controlling him with the jab. Just beautiful boxing. And look at his, look at his head movement now, right? Ducking, rolling, moving his head. His head is not in the same spot. Boom. And able to probe and throw another shot. <clears throat> you know, to be honest, his head's kind of been in most of the same spot for most of the round. But because he's using the lead hand dominance, it doesn't matter. Because he's controlling Lamont Peterson with his lead hand, it doesn't matter. Because Peterson doesn't have the opportunity to capitalize on it because of the fact that He's being controlled because he can't set up his shots. Errol Spence is able to see everything that Peterson's doing <coughs> because Peterson has to do it around his lead hand. Controls him. And, to, you know, even though Peterson kind of gets a body shot in there, right? He does. Um, Errol Spence does a good job of pushing off of him and moving off the line and mitigating the effectiveness of those shots and the ability of, for Peterson to maintain fighting on the inside. You know, so even though he gets hit, he does the right thing and moves off the line to mitigate any more damage. <clears throat> Just a beautiful performance from Errol Spence. And now I know like a lot of people thought I'm a hater on Errol Spence, you know, this isn't this that. The Kevin Cagle, you know, you, you don't get excited about those kinds of fighters, right? Errol Spence, you know, great. You know, I don't know what he did in the Olympics, to be honest, I don't remember. Um, but he fought in the Olympics, I think. You know, he's a world champion now. He's got great technique, speed, power. You know, he hits hard. He's sharp. He's fun as fuck to watch. But you really want to get excited about somebody who can control their opponent, right? The first step in learning to box, right, is learning to control yourself, learning to control your body. That's your, your power, your speed, your technique, right, how you're able to move in the ring, right? And you see that the fighters, like, like how people are so excited about Errol Spence because he has such great control over his body, right? And people think that that equates being a great fighter. But then you have fighters like Lomachenko, right? Who are not only good at controlling their body, but they have the next step where they're controlling their opponent's body, right? And once you can do both of those things, <clears throat> you wind up in the, in the light of, you know, of being, um, of being a uh, Vasily Lomachenko or being a uh, Alexander uh, Gochik, God, the nail. Alexander, man, I'm never going to get it right. And everybody tells me in the comments, I'm so sorry. <coughs> uh, ghost chick, man. But anyway, you get to be one of those fighters, right? Erislandi Lara, right? Starting to study fighting and study boxing and learning how to control his opponent's lead hand, right? Um, uh, becoming a complete fighter, right? And the, you know, it's, the verdict is not out yet on, on, um, um, Erzani Lara yet, right? I got to do more film study, but watching that fight live, Erzani Lara did a great job in his most recent fight. But Errol Spence, you know, if he can continue to learn and continue to grow in this regard, not committing to his shots, but making his opponents make mistakes first, um, he's he's gonna be the one of the best fighters, number one, you know, pound for pound fighter, you know, you know, maybe number three. Uh, I don't think he's gonna get ahead of. Um, Vasily Lomachenko anytime soon um, 
or um, or Golovkin, right? But but moving up in the rankings, um, this performance makes me believe that he's gonna smash Keith Thurman, smash him. And before this performance, just off the Kell Brook performance and watching watching Keith Thurman fight um, Luis Colazo. Even though Luis Colazo hurt him with the body shot, right? And Errol Spence goes to the body quite a bit. Um, I would have given the edge, I think, the slight edge to Keith Thurman because he hits really hard. He hits really hard. And he actually does have a pretty good control game against left-handed fighters. But <coughs> being kind of a midget, you know, for fighting someone like Errol Spence, someone who's so long and so, you know, um, so quick, right, and so tall... Um, with the control game that he's exhibiting against Errol, uh, against Peterson, I give the edge to Errol Spence. I think that, you know, I think that he has a great chance of just making that fight look real easy and making Thurman look worse of a fighter than he is, you know? <clears throat> and he's not the greatest fighter, to be honest, Keith Thurman. He's got a lot of work to do. I don't like the way that he sets his punches up. It's very dangerous, but he gets away with it because he does use some defensive responsibility with head movement after. But you can time that... Um, Eric, Danny Garcia did a decent job of kind of picking off the and understanding that the setup punches were coming and then the real punch was the second punch. So you can kind of time it. You can kind of figure it out and get used to their patterns. Um, but anyway, uh, Errol Spence, you know, this is, in my opinion, this is his breakout performance. You know, he's had some great wins, some great knockouts, but dominating Peterson in this regard um, is definitely... Um, in my opinion, his his this is his first step. In my opinion, to really making it into the pound for pound rankings, and for me considering him uh, being a pound for pound fighter. Um, now, the the real question is for me, um, Terence Crawford, because I picked Terence Crawford before this fight to absolutely smash Errol Spence, to really be able to pick, <clears throat> to really be able to pick him apart <clears throat> and make him pay for. His lack of head movement, his lack of control, the fact that he always commits to everything. Um, but now I'm not so sure. You know, I'll have to do some more tape, watch some more fights, see where Errol Spence goes after this fight, see if he holds on to any of these skills, or if he forgets about them, or um, or what. But anyway, <clears throat> let me know what you guys think, and let me know if you guys want me to do the rest of the fight too. Um, I don't have a problem doing the rest of the fight. Um, and getting more rounds up if you guys are interested, especially the middle rounds where I think Errol Spence really gets comfortable and uses a lot of head movement and stuff. But um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks, guys.